Hello, everyone. This is Mark Garapi from HACE AGE, back for another episode of the HACE Wrap Up. I'm here talking to Giovanna Salvaggio. Hi, Giovanna. It's great to see you. Hi, Mark. It's great to be here. Um, you've been pretty busy this year, uh, since the beginning of the academic year, helping teachers and staff with digital teaching and learning. From our conversations at our weekly meetings, things are going quite well. Can you give us a couple of highlights from the past two months? Of course. I've been working on a variety of projects. We looked at differentiation. There's a gamification project going on at WQSB. Uh, we're working out with 3D animation at du littoral, also copyright and flip PD for Microsoft Forms. And of course, my fascination with strengthening executive functions. Aha, flip PD. I assume you mean like a, a flipped classroom where students have to watch the lecture before the class and then do exercises or ask questions with the teacher. Can you tell us about that? Well, that's right. It, that's exactly what it is. So we've been talking about uh, the flipped classroom for a while. And with the reality of the pandemic and online teaching and learning, it just made more sense for teachers in my case to get the how on their own time and meet with me either online or in person with specific questions or to apply knowledge that they've gained from watching the capsules. It just allows for richer exchanges when we meet. I see. That makes a lot of sense because there are really a lot of different tools out there and different iterations of the same thing. So this idea sounds like a time saver. Uh, by the way, how do you choose the right tool though? So it's totally a time saver, absolutely there. And you're totally right. There are so many tools to choose from and many do the same thing. So like, if you look at like, Kuka, you know, WooClap and Mentimeter, uh, Jamboards, Whiteboards, uh, you know, Miro, Kahoot. Th there's so many things, the list goes on and on. We can get lost in all of the jazzy, fancy marketing around the tools. So what I hope to communicate is that with any tool, the intention is at the core of the decision. So what do you want to do with it? Bells and whistles are fun, but there are they responding to your pedagogical intention? And if it's novelty you seek, then add variety in the ways that you use the tool. I'm not an advocate of including the latest, you know, or shiniest gadget. It's not sustainable. And my hope is that teachers feel comfortable and empowered in going deeper with the use of the tool. Um, we don't want tech to be a burden. Uh, it's there to support the teacher and the student. Teachers have so many things on their plates that I hope to provide the solution with the smallest learning curve that offers huge payoffs in the long run. I hear you. I've been having a you know, sort of a back and forth debate myself about Google and Microsoft. I'm a huge fan of Google, but Microsoft has some really nifty tools. Uh, recently, I used Office Lens to scan some documents, and it was just amazing compared to other tools that I've tried. Um, I guess the choice of the tool really depends on the context and the intention behind the use. Does that make sense? Totally, and don't get me started on the Microsoft Google debate. In this case, the selection of external tools or extensions should play well with the specific environment. For example, it would not make sense to use Google Meet if we're using a Microsoft environment. The same principle lends itself well for using tools outside of your learning management system because you might have everything that you need in that specific environment. You know, I've been guilty in my teaching career of wanting to use a new tool or to make it work regardless of whether it fit my intention. I think the best stance to take is to expand on what you already know, as you've just said, and with what you're comfortable with, like the LMS environment that you use every day. Tools don't amount to much if there's no clear pedagogical or andragogical intention behind them. It took me a while to figure that out, but uh, it should be the why before the what. Amen and hallelujah. Let's talk about for a sec. So if we start with the tool, then we need to figure out what we want to do with it. Instead, starting from the intention, example, what do you want the students to be able to work collaboratively on an essay or on a project or on a task? Okay, so a simple collaborative document will do. This can be done synchronously or asynchronously with or without the teacher there in real time. Uh, they can use breakout rooms. 
I like how you phrased it, the why before the what. Why are you using the tool? Is it to create content? Is it to give feedback for note taking, to manage time, to manage classwork or behavior? Are the students using it to explore a topic or a resource on their own time? Or do your students require assistive tech, et cetera? It's, it's the why before the what. Well, thanks, Giovanna. You've left us with a lot to think about. Teachers and consultants can reach you by email, I guess, or they can reach me through the live chat on the Reciage website. Yep, they can reach any one of us on the Reciage website, or they can reach me directly at gsalvaggio at emsb.qc.ca. I love trying to find the easiest solution to meet the teacher's needs. Excellent. Well, until next time, folks, keep your fingers on the keyboard because that is where the future in education lies. Thank you.